Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the After Work Lounge. Thank you all for coming this evening. My name is Kaz Mack, and I'm your host for this evening. Great crowd. Love you guys. Great. Okay, first of all, apologies for the tube strike. Wasn't my fault, but thank you all for coming. <laughs> um, I would like to also just give some honor, give some thanks. I want to thank my pastor, Pastor Ramsey from Word of Faith. Big up management, Piper for Masters, allowing us to use the venue this evening. Please buy some drinks and support the bar, please. Thank you. Um, also, I want to um, thank Ilton Samuel for coming this evening, one of our guest panel speakers. And our main guest, Joshua Kessler who will be sharing with us singleness from a male perspective. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay, so a few housekeeping rules. No one can go to the toilet whilst we are filming. Once we're on a break, you'll feel, feel free to go to the toilet. Okay, so um, yeah, with that, I think I've covered everything. Um, and it's a Joshua Kessler, would you like to come up for real, please? Thank you. It's all yours. Thank you. <laughs> well, I want to take this opportunity to um, welcome you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. It's actually good to um, be here to share with you and to um, talk about uh, singleness from a male perspective. Um, one of the things that I will, well, some of the things that I will, I will cover tonight will be from my own personal um, testimony, as well as um, I actually thought this topic was quite interesting because a number of I think it was sometime last year, I actually done a topic um, on my radio show uh, talking about men and singleness. So I thought it was actually quite interesting when Kaz actually asked me to come on, come on board and to talk about this subject. So what I'm going to do without further ado, I'm just going to um, give you some information in terms of what men say about sisters. And this is what they say about some sisters. So I don't want... Um, <laughs> Let me just make sure I say some, because the last time I was here, I nearly got my head chopped off. Um, so I just want to make it clear, some sisters. And I don't want you to, um, I think it's important that we have these kind of events where we can be open, we can be transparent, we can keep it real. And I'm a realist. I, um, I'm a Christian man. Um, I've been saved for, uh, I would say, nearly 18, 19 years. Um, but I believe that it's important that we, as Christians, are transparent and open because we live in a real world. And sometimes we can be so spiritually minded and not earthly good. So my job tonight is to just give you some information and then hopefully we can have a discussion at the end. Okay? So based on um, the radio show that I done sometime last year, as I said, men from a, um, from a single perspective, this is some of the things that men had to say about some of the sisters within the life of the church. And I know I've been to quite a few, of, few events and um, you would often find that a lot of men will not come to an event like this. You would predominantly see um, the sisters um, in droves um, coming to events like this, but the men will not come to these kind of events. And this is some of the things um, what they have said. So the men have said that some of these events they see as a meat market. Um, they find themselves being under a type of a spotlight and they see it as a place of window shopping. Um, they, uh, some of the men have said that some women act like piranhas. Um, and this is not, this is, this is not in a, in a, in a, to be conveyed in an uh, offensive way, but these are some of the men's experiences. And I know that there are a lot of sisters within the life of the church who want to get married and there is nothing actually wrong with that. That's a good thing. Um, the Bible tells us that, you know, two is better than one. Uh, but I think it's important, you know, as male and, 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 and female, that we know how to conduct ourselves as Christians. But this is what they have said. They find that some men, are, um, the sisters are like piranhas, like pursuing them. Um, men like to be in control and they do not feel in control in such an environment. Uh, they say they ha they have said that um, there is a, a sense of dictatorship that comes from women. Um, women are telling the men how they are supposed to be and what they're supposed to do. And you know, I think when I was coming down in the car, I was having a conversation with some of um, the brothers and sisters, 
And one of the things that came up is that sisters normally have, some sisters have a, a list, so to speak, in terms of, you know, this is the list that I have and the, the, the man that I um, intend to meet or hope to meet, he has to meet up to these expectations. And right there, there is a limit, there, there, there is a, a barrier. Because if a man approaches you, your mindset is like, well, let me refer to my list and see if he, you know, if he, if he meets every requirement. And we have to understand that um, as male and female, we are not perfect individuals. So we cannot be looking for a perfect mate or that perfect individual. And the thing is, we have to understand that the Bible says that he that findeth a wife. So why do you have a list anyway? You know, you are supposed to be just praying and, you know, just hoping that the Lord in time will present this man to you. Um, so it's, it's, it's the job of the man to, to pursue the woman. And, you know, he's supposed to find that woman on his journey in terms of when he, say, for example, if he's engaging in ministry and as he's engaging in ministry and doing the things of the Lord. And likewise, the female is supposed to be doing the same thing. And during the course of that journey, the two may meet and then hopefully it would lead to engagement, marriage, so on and so forth. So I would say that that list thing, you need to just throw it out the window. Hallelujah. Um, praise be to God. Um, some of the men um, have said that some women are quite controlling and that can be a turn off um, for, for, for men. Uh, but one of the things um, when I was actually doing my talk show is that you know the fact of the matter, men, we are still single and you know, how do we, um, I'm sure I, I speak for many sisters here, um, how do we as, as well, as people uh, who put on these events, how do we say, for example, accommodate men? How do we get men to come to these type of events? And um, what the men were saying, they were saying that um, a change of setting, because men find it very difficult to come into a church environment and to go up to a sister and to speak to a sister or to make that approach in terms of saying, well, you know, I find you quite attractive, I like you, so on and so forth. They feel that the environment is not the right environment in a church environment. So a setting like this will be so much better, this is what some guys are saying, for them to actually, you know, feel relaxed, you know, have a drink, socialize, talk, get to know um, their intended, um, so on and so forth. Uh, one of the things that the men have said is that, you know, men come into the church and they are also broken. And sometimes what can happen is that, you know, sisters have been in the church for years, they're waiting for that spouse. And sometimes, as I said, there is this pouncing before the man even gets through the door. It's like, you know, it's like, oh my God. And the thing is, you know something? I can, I can, I can understand because there's so much things that's going on in a sister's mind, you know, their biological clock may be ticking, they want to have children, and so on and so forth. And as I said, um, you know, there is so, it's like there's one man to a hundred females. And it's like when that man comes into the church, you know, every, the, the, the sister is like, well, there's, there's an expectation, they're hoping, is it me? Is he going to look at me? Is he going to see me? So on and so forth. Um, but we have to understand that when men, when men come into the church, they are also broken and they, you have to allow them time to go through a process of healing, deliverance and so on and so forth. The last thing that a man wants, um, if they're coming from a broken relationship, is to come into the church and have some sister hounding them down, you know. Um, and I'm speaking, from, I'm, I'm speaking from my own personal um, experience. I've had that experience and it's not nice. Um, some people, some men find it, say for example, uh, attractive. Um, some men find that very exciting because it lifts and boosts their ego. But for some men, it's a turn off. And they will be thinking like, well, no, 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 I can't, I cannot um, actually deal with this kind of behavior. Um, another thing that men have said is that um, women need to stop playing the blame game. And what they need to do is listen to what the men are saying. And for me, I think it's important that we have, as I said, these type of forums where we can listen one to another. I think communication is vitally important and we need to hear both sides um, of both male and female. Uh, some men have said that they need to be careful, however, how they communicate with um, a sister in, church, in a church environment um, to ensure they are not misinterpreted. Because sometimes you can develop a, a relationship with a sister in the church, you may say, oh, you know, you look nice today, and so on and so forth. And some sisters take 
um, what they have said, the compliment that they have made to that sister as, that's my wife, or um, that's my husband, or, you know, the Lord told me in the spirit, and so on and so forth. And then there's all this big palaver and drama that takes place. And then what we have to understand, um, sisters, is that if a guy tells you that your hair is nice, that does not mean that he likes you or he fancies you. There's nothing wrong with you having a healthy relationship, um, platonic relationship with a guy. If it leads to that, then um, praise be to God. But do not get it in your mindset because he tells you that your dress looks nice or you look fabulous, that you have to then now start thinking about the, the wedding dress and start, you know, making plans. No, because you know something, we laugh. These things have happened. Sisters have done these things where they have gone out and they've gone and they've booked um, uh, halls, bought their wedding dress, you know, got the bridesmaids. You don't think, I, I'm telling you, you know, I'm in ministry and I've heard of these things. And it, be, and it, can, it can be quite devastating um, to, uh, to the sister who is hoping that this man is going to be their intended. Anyway, I want to kind of like talk about my own personal relationship. I don't want to stay too long. As I, I was a young man, I got married at a very young, a young age. I got married, married at the age of 19. And um, I got married to uh, a young woman at the time who was about six years older than me. Um, but I, what can I say? I, could, I, I would say that I was a young man that was quite intelligent. Uh, so I was, I, it was as if like I was beyond my, 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 my years then. So I believed that I could hold my own. Um, but I found as, as you went, years went by, I found that my relationship with my ex-wife became very, very challenging. Um, time would not permit me to go into um, certain things that I actually experienced, but it was a very, very um, challenging time for me. And one of the things that I would encourage any brother or sister, uh, if they um, seek to get married, is to wait for a while. Um, I wouldn't encourage anybody to get married at the age of 19. You're still young. You're still um, growing, you know, you're still learning about yourself, you know, and it's about, you know, taking your time, building yourself, establishing yourself, getting um, certain things in order in terms of your ambitions, achievements, getting your whole, own home and the property and so on and so forth. I didn't do that. Um, and as a result, things didn't, um, didn't work out. And what happened is that as when my relationship broke down, there were so many things that went on in my mind emotionally. Um, I was... Uh, I was broken because I felt a failure that my marriage had failed. Um, I also vowed that um, because of my, my experience that I would never marry again. So the word commitment for me was out the window. And, and that went on for years. I, my, my relationship broke down, I think it was in 1999. And it was only about three years now that I made a decision where the Lord really worked on me and worked on my heart. Um, that I now, I'm now starting to open myself to a relationship. Um, and plus there was the other side of um, the, the thinking and the mindset that I had was of the Bible. Because you know, some of us may be coming from a background where there's certain biblical teachings where the Bible tells you that, you know, if you, um, well, I wouldn't even say the Bible. People are not, some churches don't really follow the Bible to T, but you have old school practices where you are told that once you divorce, you cannot remarry. So you then you have that, that, that issue to be dealing with and then you walk around life feeling, well, okay, my husband has left me, my wife has left me, then what do I do now? So are you telling me that I'm supposed to stay on my own for the rest of my life? And I had a particular mindset. I said to myself, if I didn't get back with my wife, I wasn't marrying anybody. Um, and plus this whole marriage thing was just, a sh it was just a game. It was a shun to me. I got hurt, I got broken and I thought, you know, my commitment to a woman was not going to happen. And I started to basically search for love in all the wrong places. I'm not going to give my um, other half of the testi testimony. Maybe some of you have heard it before, but I'm not going to give it tonight because I don't believe that it's appropriate and it's the right time. But I found myself living a life of, um, of sin. I was in a very, very dark place. But thanks be to God, he has completely turned my life um, around. Uh, one of the things that I would say is that, you know, I think it's important that uh, if you are a divorcee or you're going through the process of a divorce, like myself, when I was going through the process of divorce, I felt that it was important for me to stay on my own until I was healed and delivered and there was closure 
um, in relation to that particular relationship. What you would often find sometimes is that when you're going through this process, I've heard of cases where you know people end up meeting somebody along the way, um, the, the, the love and the support and um, what they hoped to get from their spouse at the time they weren't getting it. So this person now comes on the scene and begins to give them that attention that they craved. Um, but what you would often find is that you, the, the person may be on the rebound, um, they may end up going back to their partner during that process, or they may end up leaving you and going on to somebody else. So one of the things that I would encourage you, um, as, as, as brothers and sisters, that it's important that you go through that process. I was having a conversation with somebody um, recently, and they were saying to me that, well, what do you do if you're... Uh, if your divorce takes a number of years, say for example five to ten years, are you saying that I'm supposed to stay on my own during the course of that time? Um, and I don't have all the answers, I'm not a relationship, relationship expert, um, but I believe that we are to be integral individuals. Um, and what I said to the person, I, I, well I said that if you believe that you have gone through a process, you're going through a process of healing during that time, then maybe if you feel that it's right for you to connect with that person, then you do that. But my personal beliefs that I believe that you should wait um, until that relationship is completely settled over and done with before you connect to yourself um, with your next spouse. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the benefits I will say in terms of um, single, single, single life um, is that you are free to do as you please. I've been on my, uh, my own for, as I said, I was on my own for a very long time, and I was happy to be by myself. No one couldn't tell me nothing. I could go, I could do as I please, you know what I mean? Um, for some people, they use um, this free time as an opportunity to date multiple partners. That's something that I do not agree with, um, because I believe that if you are dating um, somebody to be your wife, you should be with one person and one person alone because having multiple partners just brings a whole lot of confusion. And I'm talking to you guys, and I'm keeping it real, um, you know, because I've heard of cases where you will have a man, he decides to, to date one sister, then he's dating another sister, then he's dating a next sister, and this sometimes happens within the life of the church. So one male will be dating three sisters, and then that sister in her mind is thinking, well, I thought you was dating me exclusively, what is going on? And I think it's important that, you know, sometimes when these things happen within the life of the church, we as the church have to be open and transparent. Go to your pastor and, I'm sorry, expose the individual. Expose them. Because that is not, um, that's, that's not Christ-like. It's not right. And pe the thing is, people come into the church and they're broken. A, a sister or a brother doesn't need to be broken down anymore. Yeah, and it's important that we are open that we are transparent, and if you find that somebody in your church is going around and doing these kind of things, be it male or female, it is our responsibility to ensure that that behavior is nipped in the bud in the name of Jesus. Do you agree? Yes. Hallelujah. Um, you know, as I said, uh, that person, a single person may feel that they're not answerable to no one, and maybe, you know, a person wants to um, focus on their achievements and their ambitions. Um, there, okay, uh, on the other hand, singleness um, um, has its challenges. Um, as I said, for some male, it could be the pursuit of multiple females. I can talk from my own experience, and I say this um, in, in, a, in a very humble fashion, that me being in the church that I belong to, being a minister, being a praise and worship leader, you would often find that there are sisters within the life of the church who are attracted not to who I am, but attracted to the power and the position that I hold, the title and the position. And sometimes it can become very, very challenging for me as an individual, because I'm thinking to myself, like, I don't really need all this drama. And you will be surprised at the, some of the things that sisters would actually do. I've had letters written to me. I've had um, uh, messages sent to me on my Facebook, multiple messages. And one of the things that I have to do, and um, as a leader, is that I'm accountable to other leaders. Yes. So I will make sure that I will go and I will inform yes. them about certain things that's actually happening with myself because there has been cases um, with myself where sisters will tell lies. Um, and this is where we have to be careful. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen to sisters because I believe it happens to them also. Amen? Yes. So um, that's one of the um, challenges, the pursuit um, of females. 
Um, another challenge is there, is a, uh, there can be um, a door open to selfishness. We become selfish as individuals. Um, you know, I just want to do things my way. Um, this is how I've done it for years. And when that person comes along, it becomes a challenge. It becomes a challenge and, and a warfare because this person comes into your life, you're used to doing things one way, and then now you've got to adapt and change to, to, to not one way of thinking, but I've got to think about the other person. And we have to be open um, to, to, to our intended spouse. Uh, as I said, stuck in your own ways, finding it hard to adapt. And then also, I think for me, there was a level of fear. Um, even though I came to a place of saying, okay, I'm going to now step out and start to pursue for my intended um, spouse, there was a level of fear. Um, and I think fear um, can come in um, and hinder us from, say, for example, meeting our spouse. Then, as I said, the whole thing of um, con um, contentment. Then there's loneliness. Um, and then there's also a temptation of being promiscuous. Um, you know, guys find themselves going on the internet, you know, looking um, at certain sites, pornography, and so on and so forth, and you just find yourself being lost um, in a place of, um, of, of outer darkness. I believe the same thing happens for sisters. You know, I have conversations with sisters um, where they talk about, some sisters say they find it difficult, and you know, what they do to, to they, they've been instructed to do certain things to relieve themselves. You know, and we have to ensure that we are so connected to our Lord and Savior, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Bible talks about, um, you know, one of the pegs of the spirit is the fruit of, of self-control. And sometimes it can be difficult, you know, because the Lord has blessed us with desires. Yeah. We have these desires. And it's not wrong for us to have these desires, but we have to ensure that we control ourselves. And one of the things I will say to guys, because one of the things that I've, I've, I've seen within the life of the church, that guys have been in church for years. And it's like, well, what's going on with you? What's going on? You're in church, you've been in church for 15 years, and as I said, the church is predominantly female, and are you telling me that you haven't seen a sister? Something is wrong. You know, and we as men, we are individuals, we are in the individuals that release. Females are made to receive. So what are you doing to release, to, to release yourself? You must be doing something. And I'm keeping it real tonight because, you know, you know it's, it's important that we are open, that we are transparent. You know, and the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn, than you're lusting, you're walking around, looking at sisters, praying, having all kinds of thoughts and images in your mind. No, it's for you to sort yourself out, get yourself right, get yourself prepared, and then you begin to, to, um, to pursue um, your mate and um, I think it's important as I said for, for, um, for looking at um, singleness from a male perspective I think it's important that as guys that we have to be at the right place spiritually um, I don't think it's, it's wise for you to be trying to connect yourself with somebody when you know that you're not right um, and I think this is where honesty comes in to play um, you have to be honest with yourself. If you know that you have issues, that you have um, issues in terms of females, lusting, or whatever it may be, you're a womanizer. Um, you, like sisters, um, you like sisters to pursue you, and you find that all, oh, this is great. It makes me feel like a man. Um, you know, you need to deal with that. You don't need to be connecting yourself with no sister at that time until you seek deliverance and help. Um, I think it's also important that, um, you know, if you know to yourself that um, you're, not, you're, you're not ready, you're just not ready. Um, I also want to say, because, um, and I'm just going to conclude on this now because I think I need to, to sit down and stop. Um, I remember when I was um, speaking to my, my, my bishop about uh, um, relationships, and I said to him that, you know, I feel that I need to have certain things in place my house, my car, and finances, and so on and so forth. And he had to, and I got a deliverance right there and then, because men have this mindset, you know, we have been taught that we are the providers. Yes, we are, so on and so forth. But men have this tendency, um, based on what we've been taught, what society tells us, what even the church tells us, that we are supposed to have certain things in place. And it's like, if we don't have these things in place, we feel as if like we can't step to a sister or so on and so forth. You need to understand that that person that you're going to meet is going to be your help meet. The two of you are coming together to work together, to build together, 
to grow together. And I think it's important, sisters, that you do not have such a high level of expectation where you say to yourself, well, I've achieved all this while I've been here on my own. And then now you come here with nothing, with your dry long hand, what you bring into the table. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you got to understand that, you know something, or maybe I need to let my barrier down a bit because this person coming into my life is going to help me, they're going to support me, and we're going to grow on this journey together. So I really hope and pray that I've kind of like given you something um, for us to, to discuss um, this evening in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So. Amen. Thank you. All right. Wow, praise God. Okay, right, what we're going to do, we're just going to have a five-minute quick break, and then we're going to open up panel discussions, okay? So five minutes. If you want to use the lavatory, feel free to do so, and I'll see you guys in five minutes.